This channel is produced by Absolute, and today I'm going to talk about the most old, uh, blah, blah. Cut. the most iconic product. Blah, blah, product. Cut. So vodka. Uh, blah, blah. Cut. This channel is produced by Absolute, and today we're going to talk about the most iconic product of all time. Absolute original Swedish vodka. Just learning how to speak English, guys. I'm Rico. This is Absolute Drinks with Rico. So the word vodka derives from either the Russian word voda or the Polish word woda and actually means little water. Now it's argued that vodka was either created first in Poland or Russia. There's a long-standing argument between both countries. The earliest recording is actually in Poland of 1405, but the Russians said they were just too drunk to write anything down. Well, people can write about it in the comments. We can have a whole argument. That's gonna be a... <laughs> real argument, but stick in the comments below and let's get into it. Okay, well how about this Absolute Vodka then that we're talking about today? Absolute Vodka is Swedish vodka, and Absolute Vodka has been available around the world for decades, and every single drop of Absolute Vodka comes from one place in Aarhus, southern Sweden. Aarhus, Sweden? Aarhus, Sweden. South. Skåne. And because vodka is such a versatile spirit, it can be used in a variety of drinks. Like sex on the beach! Sex on the Beach is the first cocktail that most people think of when they start thinking about cocktails. Sex on the Beach is a drink that everyone around the world pretty much knows. And this is a drink that you guys at home have requested seeing. Let's get into it. Let's make our Sex on the Beach. So we're going to take our tin and we're going to start with our cheapest ingredients first, which is going to be our orange juice. And we're going to go with a good 100 ml of orange juice. Next, our cranberry juice. We want 100 mils. We've got peach liqueur of your choice. What if you don't have a choice? If you don't have the choice of peach liqueur, get the peach liqueur you have. And then last but not least, we're going 20 mil of absolute vodka. From Aarhus. From all the way from Aarhus, Sweden. We're gonna throw in our ice. Give this a shake. Um, uh, we're gonna take our glass, we're gonna ice him up, we're gonna take our Hawthorne strainer, and we're just gonna go straight in. We're now gonna take our knife, get a nice little lime wedge, throw that in, and a cherry on the top. The sex on the beach. They're actually okay when I make them. Yeah, it's an okay drink when I make it. So Absolute Vodka can also be used in other iconic drinks like the Bloody Mary. Everybody in the world states that they make the best Bloody Mary. But it's actually me who it's makes it. Me. Shut up, no! Oh, yeah. But it's actually me who makes the best dang Bloody Mary in the world. But I ain't gonna tell y'all my secret. And that's purely because I find that the Bloody Mary is to your tailored preference. However you like your Bloody Mary is the best. It's totally, totally individual. Bloody Marys are like roast chicken. If you Google how to make a roast chicken, you're gonna find a hundred different recipes. You'll find a hundred different recipes for Bloody Marys. But we're gonna show you a very basic one today. Let's get into it. Uh, the technique we're gonna use is a technique called rolling. It's not really shaking. It's not really throwing. It just means we're not gonna over dilute the drink, but we'll get into that in a little bit. We're gonna take our small tin, as per usual, and we're gonna be starting with the cheapest ingredients first, a good 15 ml of lemon juice. Next, we're gonna add Worcestershire sauce. Even I can't say that. Uh, you can add this to taste, but we're gonna add around about 10 ml per drink. Next up, we're gonna add some hot sauce. Um, again, add this to taste. We like it spicy here. We do. Uh, we're gonna add a little bit of celery salt, just a pinch. If you don't like celery salt, don't add it. It's that simple. Now we're gonna add a pinch of normal salt, and then we're gonna add some black pepper. The pepper, the salt, and the celery salt, I'm not gonna give you any measurements. Just add them how you please. Next up, good quality tomato juice. Always get the best quality juice. It's quite a big glass, actually, so we're gonna go for 150. Now we're gonna add some ice. Ooh, this is some cold ice. It's cold as ice. Is it willing to sacrifice your love? 
Okay, let's get some ice in here. So we're gonna do some rolling, and all rolling is is throwing backwards and forth. We wanna mix, but we don't really wanna do any dilution. So we're just rolling backwards and forwards just to make sure that's all nice and cold. We're using these jars. Jars, Bloody Marys, it looks hipster, it looks rustic. Use what you've got in your house. And what we're doing here is also another technique. It's called dirty icing. There's no need to throw this ice away. Just put it in. We're gonna garnish that up now. We're gonna take some celery. Throw that right in. A little bit of lemon zest and those lemon oils on top. They're gonna really freshen up the whole drink. There we go. Just throw that in. A very, very good, but simple basic recipe on the Bloody Mary. But wait, Rico, are we gonna put in any vodka? So a perfect Virgin Mary right here. Perfect Virgin Mary. <laughs> but don't worry guys, cause watch. We're gonna take this out. We're gonna take our tin. We're gonna stick this in. See guys, when you make drinks with Rico, don't matter if you fuck up. Stick that vodka right in there. Roll, roll. It's TV, fresh glass. Say that again, Indy. Um, I, I got a question, okay? Okay. Question about the Bloody Mary. Is it named after England's old Queen Mary? Because she was called Bloody Mary because of all the executions that happened when she tried to reverse the Reformation and make England Catholic once again. Well, it's not actually entirely certain where the name comes from. There's claims that it refers to the old movie star Mary Pickford or to a waitress named Mary who worked at a bar called the Bucket of Blood. Uh, there's also the claim that because English speakers mangled the name Vladimir, Vladimir, uh, which the drink may have originally been called 100 years ago. The story goes that the original customer for the drink was Vladimir Smirnov. Wait, Smirnov? Smir Doesn't that name sound familiar? You may have some questions about vodka though. Here's a little lecture. Vodka is a clear, distilled, alcoholic beverage that originates from around the countries within the vodka belt. Those countries are Belarus, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Sweden, the Ukraine, Poland, and Russia. Maybe some more, I can't remember them all. But vodka was traditionally made from cereal grains of rye, barley, wheat, or potatoes. If you make vodka from any of these ingredients, you are allowed to call your vodka purely vodka. If you make your vodka from anything else, say grapes, corn, milk, you have to state that it is grape, corn, or milk vodka. So long story short, it's boiled water. <laughs> Gonna get it in the eye like and the tea. <laughs> but of course you're watching this because vodka is used to make amazing drinks. And now I'm gonna show you how to make an espresso martini. I'm gonna need some espresso, so give me one sec. Can I do something? Yeah, 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 come on. Tell us some fun facts about yeah, vodka. Yeah, sure, hey. I'm busy making the okay, espresso. Uh, uh, Okay, fun fact. Um, in World War II, uh, American, uh, American general and future president Dwight Eisenhower gave Soviet general Georgi Zhukov a popular American cola, right? And Zhukov thought, well, this is really good, and he wanted more. But he couldn't have more because the cola was a symbol in the Soviet Union of you know, Western imperialism and stuff. And through Eisenhower, got to the cola company, and the cola company made a special version of it with no color, so it looked like vodka, because it was totally acceptable for Zhukov to drink vodka in public because he was Russian, and they bottled it in these clear glass bottles with little white caps and little red stars on it. Are you, do I need to do, I was like, cool, I could do another. No, okay. oh, it's cool, we got this. And now, the espresso martini. This is actually one of my legitimate favorite drinks, and the thing that you gotta worry about here is not the vodka, it's the amount of espresso you can drink in one night. Do you know the story about the espresso martini? No. Would you like to know the story about the espresso martini? Absolutely. It's got rude words in it. Even more. Okay. One of the last legends of bartender, Mr. Dick Bradsell, RIP, he died a couple of years ago. He was the person that created the espresso martini. It was then called the Vodka Espresso. And the story is, he was working in a brasserie back in the 80s in Soho in London. A very famous supermodel walked up to him in the bar and quite frankly said, I need a drink that will wake me up and 
fucked me up at the same time. And that is the inspiration to the Espresso Martini. It's a 2-1-1 ratio in this cocktail. Let's start with 25 ml of good Kahlua coffee liqueur. We're gonna add a whole shot of espresso, followed by 45 ml of the daddy that's paying the bills, Mr. Absolute Vodka. We're gonna throw in a nice big chunk of ice. Wow. And we're gonna shake this up. Now, because we used such a big block of ice and shook it very, very hard, there's not actually any ice chips in here. So usually I would do a fine strain, but there's no need. So we're gonna take our Hawthorne strainer, we're gonna take our martini glass and just pour that straight in. You wanna be looking for it to get that same crema that you get on an espresso, and you should see it rise and settle exactly like an espresso. Traditionally, you would throw in uh, three coffee beans as a little garnish, but they get stuck in the gap of the teeth, so I never garnish my espresso martinis. Wait, where do they get stuck? Get stuck right in the glug of the teeth. Glug. Glug. That's Swedish for gap, apparently. Glug. Glug. But the espresso martini, fantastic drink. <sighs> Rich chocolate, velvety flavors. Coffee, vodka, yes. You get real rich coffee and chocolate flavors from the Kahlua. The espresso that we used was banging, so that's good. All elevated by the flavor carrying properties that is absolute vodka. Great drink, I smash these out all night. That's all for today. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments below. If you'd like to learn some easy vodka drinks, then click here. Don't forget to click subscribe to never miss an episode. Okay, Indy, tell them a vodka fun fact. Wait, really? Uh, yeah, okay, um, okay, uh, fun fact. Uh, in 1837, that, uh, oh man, come on.